let's now look at finding probabilities for normal distributions. We're going to start out with just standard normals, and then in another video we'll talk about any normal distribution. The principles with these though are the same, meaning that meaning that if I'm if I have any normal distribution, then I can use the same procedure as in what we're about to do just by switching out the formula to any normal distribution instead of the standard normal distribution. So when we find the normal distribution probabilities or if we're looking for the inverse and we're given the probabilities and we're looking for the x's or the z's, um, we're going to sketch these graphs. Sketching the graph is very helpful in working to determine what it is we're looking for and if we're setting it up correctly. So let's take a look at a, a first example of how we can calculate probabilities. Um, I'm using the Excel formulas below, but if you leave out the true at the end of the argument, you, use, you can use Google Sheets for this very same thing. So an example for Google, the one right below us, we would type in norm dot dist and then put in the z without the true norm dot s dot dist z no true will get us the google formula so in the first example we need the area to the left of the given z value so we will be given a z value and we have to find the corresponding area it, notice we have two scenarios. We could have a z that is positive, meaning it's above the mean, it's greater than zero. Or we have a negative z, meaning it's below zero or below the mean. And the big thing to think about is that if we're looking at areas to the left and I have a negative z score, then that area is going to be less than half. So if we're trying to find area to the left of a z value and we have a negative z, notice that that area is pretty small. It actually has a limit. That area cannot be bigger than half because 0.5 is exactly half of 1, which is the area to the left of 0. So I know those numbers aren't very clear, but the point being, if I have a negative z value, I'm looking for areas less than z a probability that z is less than a given value then that probability should be smaller than half if my z is negative if i have a positive z meaning it's above the mean i already have 0.5 to the left of zero so adding more onto it will get us a value greater than one half i'm telling you this so that you can start to think about the answers that the technology is giving you back and hopefully be able to catch any mistakes that might happen. So these are things to think about when we're using that technology. So z less than the z value, we're going to use area to the left. Another quick note that makes this slightly different from our conversation on binomial distributions, whether we use strictly less than or less than and equal to, they're going to give us the same value, the same probability. So including this z value or not does not change the overall area under the curve. It's a little bit important as far as the difference between dis discrete probability distributions and continuous probability distributions. And you don't really get into the why until you get, again, back into that calculus class. Let's take a look at the next type of problem we could have. We could have z is greater than a given z value. Greater than, or we could have greater than or equal to. In this case, we're looking for area to the right of the z value. As you can see in these pictures, to the right of the z value, no matter which way it is. Notice in this case, because we're looking at area to the right, that idea of half has flip-flopped. If we're less than zero and we're looking at to the right, we've got half plus a little more. 
If we're greater than zero, we have definitely less than half because again, it's already bigger. Here, even though it's hard to see, there's a one minus in front of the norm.s.dist formula. And again, we've got the s here because we're talking about z's. We're talking about the standard normal. Z's for statistics represents the standard normal distribution. X can represent any variable. We let X default to any normal distribution when we're in this chapter talking about normal distribution. So Z will always be standard normal. X will be any other normal. So to find the area to the right, we're going to subtract from one. The formula, the norm.s.dist, gives us the area to the left. But we don't want that area. We want the area to the right. Remember that this whole area under the curve adds to one. So in order to get the area to the right, we need to take the whole area, one, and subtract off the area to the left. If we're looking at this in Google, we would take off the true and if we're doing this in any normal distribution with the mean and the standard deviation, we would just switch out the formula from norm.s to norm.dist x mean standard deviation and then true. And we can have a scenario where we're looking between two values. So we have z value 1 and z value 2. We need the area between the two. So to do that, We'll take the larger of the two numbers first and calculate that area, and then subtract that from the area less th um, to the left of the smaller one. Drawing this out in pictures, I know we have some examples here. These three examples are just showing where the z values can occur. So we could have one negative and one positive. We could have both of them being positive. We could have both of them being negative. But let's take a moment to the side and allow me to draw out, I don't know, um, I'm gonna draw out this middle one. So let's say we had Z1 and Z2 given to us. And again, we could put these anywhere, but eh, for just for this purpose, I picked the middle one. And we want the area between them. So we want this area here. Remember that the formula only gives us back area to the left. And I'm on the standard normal so I can change that mean to a zero. I'm gonna put in Z2 first. So the first formula takes Z2 and everything to the left, all of this area here. And that I'm gonna color yellow and subtracts from that area the area to the left of z1, which is this area over here, so that we are left with only the area in the middle. So we subtract off the green area and we're left only with the remaining yellow, which is equivalent to what it is that we're looking for. And that's why we have this subtraction of two different formulas, just like we saw with the binomial distribution. Let's put this into practice. First, calculating a left area or a left probability. Find the probability that z is less than 1.87, or equivalently, find the area to the left of z equals 1.87. We can start out by drawing our standard normal graph. Make a hill, put zero in the middle. Don't worry too much about it. And then 1.87 is somewhere over here. I know he's to the right of zero because 1.87 is bigger than zero, so I can put it there. And we're looking at left area, area to the left. So we want Excel to calculate this area here. Just looking at that picture, I can see that 1.87 is greater than zero. Since I'm looking for area to the left, 1.87's area should be greater than half. Let's see what it looks like when we plug it into Excel. So here we have Excel. 
And remember that there are only subtle differences between Excel and Google. So um, if you're using Google Sheets, the only thing you would do is leave out the true that I'm going to type in for Excel. So we're calculating area to the left of 1.87, norm.s.dist, 1.87 is my z value that I'm given. I do not need the mean and the standard deviation because I'm already telling Excel that I'm using the standard normal. And notice it prompts me with true or false. So we always want true for this. You can either click it or type it in. I think I double clicked it on that. Norm.s.dist 1.87 comma true. Don't forget your equal sign out front so Excel knows that you want it to calculate something. And when we hit enter, 0.96925. So 0.9693 would be our final answer for that question. Notice how fast Excel is at calculating it. It's great. Let's look at right area probabilities. So find the area to the right of z equals negative 1.21. We can draw another picture, put a hill, zero in the middle, negative 1.21 this time is to the left, but we are being asked area to the right, so we're asked for this area here. Again, noticing that I'm smaller than zero and I'm looking for area to the right, so I'm going to have a big number, again, bigger than half. And let's pop this one into Excel. So using Excel again, norm.s.dist, negative 1.21, comma, true. If I hit enter, um, wait a minute, I just said that that probability should be greater than half, and it's less than half. Click up in here. Oh, yes. To the right means I've got to do a 1 minus in the front. So if we include the 1 minus and hit enter, 0 0.88686, 0 0.8869 if we're rounding to two decimal places. And we can find that area pretty easily. So just taking a few seconds to pop in the Windows commands over to the side, just so that they're there for reference. Area to the right of negative 1.21, 0 0.8869. Let's take a look at example three. We're talking about a between area. Find the area between 1.43 and negative 1.51. So drawing a picture here to represent this situation. We have our bell curve, our zero in the middle. 1.43 is higher than zero and negative 1.51 is below zero to the left. And we're looking for this area between the two of them. So betweens mean we calculate the upper and then subtract calculating the lower. Let's see what that would look like in Excel. Norm.s.dist. We'll start out with 1.43 because it is the largest and subtract from that. Norm.s dot dist negative 1.51 1. and that is what we will have to calculate our between problem. So, so I'm popping the Excel up there. I haven't even hit enter yet. We should hit enter. 0.8581. Now let's look at finding the probability between 0 and 2.04. In this case, we're cutting off at zero, zero to point or to two point oh four. Well, we already know the area to the left of zero. This area is half. So in order to calculate the area between zero and two point oh four, we really just need to calculate 2.04 and subtract half from it. Let's see what that would look like. So 
So there's our first one, norm.s.dis 2.04 comma true. We want to subtract off the area to the left of zero, which is 0.5. And you can see we got 0.4793, and we can write that here. So this area, 0.4793. In example five, we're looking for z value. Find the z value such that the area under the standard normal distribution curve left of the z value is 0.2733. So notice how the question changes. In the first four examples, we're being asked for probabilities. But this problem asks us for a z value. We're changing what's being asked. Find the z value such that the area under the standard normal distribution curve left of the z value is 0.2733. The area is 0.2733. We've got to find this z value that makes that statement true. So, again, drawing a graph, area left of the z value is 0.2733. It's smaller than half. But I don't want to put that 0.2733 here along the x-axis. It's not an x. It's a probability. So this probability to the left of some mysterious z-value is going to be 0.2733. We need to use the inverse function. Let's see how that would look. We're going to use the standard normal inverse function to calculate this because we're still on those standard normals. We'll talk about any normals in a subsequent lesson. Norm.s.inv 0.2733 is our probability. And I put that in, hit enter, and we get negative 0.60286, 6029. And it makes sense that the z value is negative because 0.2733 is smaller than half. So our z score must be less than zero. So this is saying for a value that is six tenths of a standard deviation away from the mean, we're going to get a probability of 0.2733. And then I made a small mistake in example six. Scratch out the values that are given and put in 0.3428 unless it's already there. Find the z value such that the area under the standard normal distribution curve between 0 and the z value is 0.3428. So we're still looking for a z value like in example 5. So we're going to use that inverse normal function again. Let's draw our normal distribution and stick 0 in there. We're looking at between 0 and z so we can partition that out. This area between 0 and z that we don't know is 0.3428. Well, how do we find that using the inverse normal distribution? Because the inverse normal gives us the z value that corresponds to that area being all to the left. But we have a stop here at 0. That's a problem. One thing we can do how much area is to the left of 0? Yep, 0.5. I know that 0.5 is to the left of 0. So if I'm looking at all the area, total area left of z, I'm looking at 0.5 plus 0.3428. Or 0.8428 is my probability left of the z that I'm looking for. So we can use the inverse norm with 0.8428 to determine our corresponding z value. So we can type that in norm.s.inv 0.8428 and if I close it I get 1.0060 as the answer. Awesome.
So we can use the standard normal distribution curve to solve a wide variety of practical problems. We only need that the variable be normally or approximately normally distributed. But we'll see in the next videos that we're not restricted to the standard normal. We don't have to convert x's to z's and then use the standard normal. We can jump right into using norm.dist and norm.inv and just inserting the mean and the standard deviation in there. For all the problems presented in chapter 6, we can always assume the variable is normally or approximately normally distributed so that we can apply the normal distribution calculations to those problems.